Hey guys, today I'll be talking about KH and GH and what it is and how to raise it. I will be doing another video on how to lower it, but today I'll just be talking about how to raise it. So what is KH and GH? GH and KH and GH is basically the hardness of water. So KH being the carbonate hardness and GH being the general hardness of the water. And it is very important in aquariums. I won't go into too much detail of them. You can read up on it, but I again, I'm just going to show you guys how to raise it today. Um, another factor you need to know, assuming you know basic chemistry, is pH, which is basically how acidic the substance or water or whatever you're testing is. So if you have very low KH and GH, it means your water is very soft. If you have very high KH and GH, it means your water is very hard. Now, there are some certain... Um, you know, times where your KH would be really low or your and your GH would be really high or vice versa, which sometimes people will have issues with their pH. So basically what happens is if your water is very soft, so if you have very low KH and GH, your pH will drop. So for me, I have basically zero in both. So my water is really, really soft and the water from my tap is usually eight. The pH is usually eight. But it would drop from 8 to 6 overnight, which is, as you can imagine, very shocking for the fish. And it does hurt the fish, and it will make the fish very sick. So it is important that you know what this is, and you make sure that your pH is stable. Um, I do want to say that if your pH, you know, is a little bit above or a little bit below the recommended pH for the species of fish you have, I would recommend not messing with it, because if you mess with it and you experience pH fluctuations, your fish just may end up, you know, getting more hurt or sick from you trying to fix the pH than you, you know, just leaving it as is. So if it is just like a little bit um, over the range or under the range you want, just don't mess with it. The most important thing in your aquarium is keeping the water clean and keeping the pH stable. So for me, in my case, my pH you know, as I said before, goes from eight to six overnight, which does hurt my fish and it did make her really sick. And I did not know why it was my, it was a mistake on my part. I didn't never tested the water hardness, you know? So if you've never tested it, I would strongly, strongly recommend you to test it. And everything you will need is in the description below. So you can just check there. I've tried to link as many um, places as I can. So you can go purchase a test kit yourself and test your water. Um, it was my mistake. I did never test my water and that's what happened to my fish. Luckily, she did not die, but I have heard stories where people just never tested their hardness and ended up losing fish to it, which is very unfortunate. I don't want any, I don't want it to happen to you. So if it did happen to you, I'm very sorry for, you know, your fish and hopefully we can, you know, prevent that in the future. So without further ado, let's get started in the tutorial. I'm sorry if you hear scratching behind me. It's my dragon. She wants to come out, but I'm recording right now. Chief, no. So you're watching me but uh, so what you get in the test kit is the kh test the gh test the instructions and also two test tubes but i broke one of them yesterday trying to record this video and i cut myself so um i only have one now and it's open I, this is a bad example okay so it comes with two test tubes it should be clean i've used this before so that's why there's water in it and it also comes with instructions you can read it if you want but i will be showing you guys how to use it so basically the use of these two are exactly the same, but they just change color. So this one, it changes from orange to green, and this one changes from blue to yellow. So here I'll be referencing to this. So depending on how many drops it takes for your test tube water to turn yellow or green to co corresponding to which bottle you're using will be how hard your water is. So for example, if it, for KH, if I use three drops to turn my water yellow, so in this test tube yellow, my uh, ppm of KH would be 53.7. Um, I hope that makes sense. I will be showing you guys how to use it. So again, these two are the same, so I'm only gonna be showing you guys how to use the KH one because they're both the same. No point showing you how to use both. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna test it. So you you can use a syringe if you want. I have this little clean syringe thingy um, to measure out the water because it is kind of hard to measure out the test tube water. So what you do is you just wanna take water directly from your tap or in a cup or something like that. And just pour it in there. You want to make sure to look at it at eye level. There will be a little, um, I don't know how well the camera picks it up, but there will be a little curve. And you want to make sure the bottom of the curve is at the line. And there is a plane. Bullseye. So now what you do is you just unscrew it. And uh, as you can see, you just see, look in here, it's yellow, orangey yellow. So the water is supposed to turn yellow. 
it will turn blue it should turn blue first and then yellow depending on how hard your water is so you just want to and vertically hold it like that and just drop the drop in there make sure to add one drop at a time so you get the most accurate results close the cap and go like that invert it as you can see you can't see the color but you can use a white piece of paper um, you can kind of see at the bottom the camera doesn't pick it up that well but at the bottom it's kind of yellowy do you see that yellowy tint this means my waters are yellow you can also look through here it's yellow so it's kind of like a pea yellow color let's dump that out and make sure to clean it so what does that tell me? It took one drop for my test tube water to turn yellow. So that means the uh, PPM of KH in my tap water is 17.9. So it's very, my water is very soft. But for the fish I want, which is goldfish, they should have between um, uh, six to eight or nine um, drops. So it really depends on your fish, the species of your fish, and how high the pH is. Usually near 1, uh, which is very soft, the pH is 6, so you can kind of mess around with it. Um, it doesn't change pH instantly after you add baking soda or whatever in there. It will take a day, so you can test like that if you want the most accurate results. But for my fish, uh, 6 to 8, 5 and 9 is okay, so just a little range will be good for the fish. will be okay for my goldfish. So next thing I want to do is um, for KH, which is what I'm testing right now, you want some baking soda. For GH, you want the Chloe Brium. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I will again leave everything in the link below, or description below. So the first thing you'll need is baking soda for KH. There are other ways to raise it, but I'm just going to be showing you guys with these two products today. And you'll want a little teaspoon. You can either use, uh, I would recommend 1 8 but I don't have a 1 8 one, so I'm just going to use 1 4 and what you do is you just, you see, just scoop it out. Try to get as even as possible. Like this, as you can see. And what you want is you want a container of water. So you can, you just want to make sure your container of water, you know how much water it is, is in there. So for my example, I have a five gallon tank, um, which is empty, there's nothing in there. And it's filled to the brim. So you can see it's filled to the brim and there's water coming out. So this is a five gallon aquarium and I know how much water is in there. You want to make sure you know how much you can test with one gallon. You can test with three gallons, however many you want, but I'm testing with five gallons because this is the easiest for me. So, <laughs> so I'm going to add this. It's kind of full actually. All right. So I'm going to add this in there. Remember, this is for testing. You don't need water conditioner. Just make that. Okay. That's no, that's okay. That's overfilled. All right. So you just mix it. Make sure to mix it well. And now we're going to grab some water. Make sure your test tube is clean when you're using it. It's upside down. And, oh no, now it's upside down. Okay, I'm blind. Um, and you just pour it back in there. I rinsed it with the other water earlier. So again, with the syringe, it's very easy to put the water inside the tube. And now, wherever my KH went, I'm going to add one drop at a time. Just invert it, and as you can see, it's blue. I didn't do anything to it. All I did was this. It's blue. And now let's keep testing it and see how how much uh, KH is in there now. Another drop. Again, one drop at a time to ensure that it is very uh, as accurate as possible. So it's still blue. So that's two drops. Make sure to keep count of the drops. Three. Knocking everything over today. Still blue. Four. It's kind of a yellowy blue color. Again, as I said, you can use like white pieces of paper. It's a yellowy blue color. Fine. You want to make sure if you uh, hold it vertically, the bottle of this vertically, so that the drops is even. So as you can see, it's yellow. So it took five drops for my KH to turn yellow. So what does that mean? My uh, KH ppm is 89.5. And so my pH is around 7-ish. Again, you can test it um, more accurately, but to mine, when I get it up to about, um, upside down, when I get it up to, I usually go for 8. Um, I can, you can go up to 9, but just try not to go up to 10. So uh, between 6 and 8 is good. I usually get, I usually try to get 6 or 7. Um, sometimes I get to 8, but I try to get 6 or 7. And that wakes my pH about 8. 
So, um, yeah. So again, you can test it, but I don't, I don't know if there's an exact measurement or something for that. Um, but again, this is just a, just a show. So as you can see, you just keep adding. So what you do after that is you just keep adding baking soda one, one scoop at a time into your little testing container thingy. So in my case, that. You mix it around, make sure to mix it around really nice. And then just keep testing until you get the desired amount of drops, if that makes sense. So as you can see, I added one scoop to the tank earlier and it made mine five drops, which is almost the amount I want. Um, as, so you can just keep testing until you get to the desired number of drops. It's the same with the GH. The GH is usually easier because of this equilibrium. It has a um, little measure here. Again, you can play around with it. I found that one tablespoon for my 25 gallon gets up to 12 drops, which is a bit too high in my case. So what I try to do, I uh, use about one fourth of a tablespoon. So now that you have your amount, so for me, uh, I need three fourths of a teaspoon for my five gallon to get to eight, nine drops, or er, seven, eight drops. So I need to add three fourths for the drops I want in this tank, so the five gallon tank. So what you want to do is you just want to multiply this by the amount of gallonage in your um, aquarium. So for example, me, I have a 30, or no, <laughs> I have a 25 gallon tank that I need to add baking soda to. So for this, this is a five gallon, I needed three fourths of a teaspoon. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this to 25. So five times five is 25 gallons. So five of these will be 25. So what you do is just measure the amount of baking soda. So in my case, I need three fourths. You take three fourths and then you or mul <laughs> you take your amount of baking soda and then you multiply it by the amount you multiplied this tank with, if that makes sense. So for example, for me, uh, mine ha I have a 25 gallon tank and this is five gallons. So I multiply five by five, uh, which is which equal 25. So I would multiply three over fourths by five. Now that's for me, it may be different for you, um, but that's for me. So I'm just giving an example. Hopefully that makes sense and is not too confusing. Um, you just multiply, I'm pretty sure it's kind of simple. It's just I'm dumb and I need a lot of explanation. That's why I'm explaining it so thoroughly, but I'm sure it makes, it's, it's simple. You just multiply it to the amount you have. So the same thing goes for the GH, just mess around with it. And um, yeah, so I'm not gonna show you guys to do the GH because I, it's literally the same. You just measure it and stuff like that. So I hope that made sense. If you, again, if you do have any more questions, um, feel free to leave it uh, in the description. I mean, what am I saying today? In the, in the comments below, um, and I will try to answer them. So I hope you, this helped in some way maybe, and uh, I'll see you guys later.